To start, we're going to look at some of the high-level reminders around build assemblies and group items. You probably already know these tips, but this is good to keep in the front of your mind throughout this entire training. So first, we are building off the workflow of sales order to invoice when we do any kind of inventory fulfillment in QuickBooks. A sales order without an assembly item on it requires only two transactions to complete the sale. Sales order to invoice, pretty simple. A build assembly, however, requires an extra transaction. You go from sales order to build assembly, right? Then to create the invoice. That extra step requires management. It has to be entered in the system and marked as pending, so then I can go build it. Then I have to come back in the system and mark it as finished when I've completed the build. Then we go back to the sales order and fulfill the shipment to get the item out the door and onto an invoice. Some companies do not really need that bomb step because the sales order is enough to tell the warehouse what they need to gather and put together to ship out. The bill materials or the assembly is an extra step that takes more time to manage than the benefit to leadership in reporting. Speaking of reporting, let's go into our item list here. Moving to group items versus assemblies. So I scroll down to the bottom of my list here to group items versus assemblies. A group item cannot be reported on inside of QuickBooks, right? If I right click, try and do a quick report, it's grayed out. It won't let me do it. This means I cannot have a group item like lamp kit and know how many lamp kits I have sold. I will know, however, how many of the components inside of the lamp kit I've sold. Okay? So how many lanterns, how many fixtures, etc. I will not know how many of these components I sold in the lamp kit, but I'll know how many of these components I've sold as a whole, right? Because they will actually show up on the sales transaction. In a group item, I cannot know how many of this group I can fulfill right because the quantity doesn't sit at the group level it only sits at the component level so there's nowhere in there to for me to go in and say how many kits can I fill based on how many components I have on hand with an assembly item however you can create a quick report right uh, I can filter reports by this item so when I'm filtering and I choose uh, by item the finished goods, the assembly items are going to be items that I can choose on those filters. You can see how many of them were sold, so how many finished products were sold, how many finished lights were sold. I can see how many of these I have on hand or have had on hand historically. Okay, But sales reports are not at the component level inside of QuickBooks, meaning I cannot say tell me how many finished lights I sold, so therefore how many 50-30s were used in order to get to that final number of how many finished lights I sold. Right? There's not a report inside of QuickBooks that does that. I can see how many 50-30s were used overall, right? all my assemblies or all my sales if I've sold any of them, but I can't easily get to how many 50-30s were used to build finished lights. right? inside of QuickBooks. Everything's inside of QuickBooks. We can always get to the report through some custom reporting uh, and, and Excel and things like that, but inside of QuickBooks. So keep in the mindset that group versus assembly should be, are you stocking the item where you need to know how many of the assembled, finished, good part you have on hand? Or do you assemble the item to order where you keep all the components separate until the order comes in? And what level do you want to report sales numbers on? All right. The third point that we want to touch on is to review the accounting behind group and assembly items. So group items, when I look at the group item again, at the group item level, you can hit multiple sales accounts and multiple cost of goods sold accounts when you sell the group item, right? You At the group item level, I'm not telling it which cost of goods sold account or which sales account or asset account to hit because that is set up at the component level. Okay, so at the sale, I can hit multiple sales accounts. When it comes to an assembly item, you hit only one cost of goods sold account at the time of sale, right? The cost of goods sold that's set up at the assembly or the income account that's set up at the assembly item. 
Now, of course, you can have assembly items inside of groups, but of course, that's taking us down a whole rabbit hole.